Welcome to Pastor Beam TV. Thank you for tuning in. Pastor Beam TV is here to give you the daily dose of God's Word that you require. Though it comes weekly, but I know you can watch daily. Be blessed. Today we'll be talking about the faithfulness of God and His generosity. God is so faithful and very generous. He is. He is beautiful, the Bible says. And it's all about his generosity. He's glorious. You are beautiful beyond description. So marvelous for the world. So wonderful for comprehension. Like nothing, not ever seen or heard. That's a God. Who can then your infinite wisdom who can find your infinite wisdom who can fathom the dead of your love you are beautiful beyond description majesty and throne on it's beautiful beyond description god is generous who can find the debt of your law? He is a generous God. The Bible says, test and see that the Lord is good. The psalmist has tasted God and he knows that God is good. And that is where he offered. He said, test and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. So God is faithful. I don't know what he has promised you. I don't know what he has said to you. He is faithful to do what he will do. God is He's not man that he should lie. He's not in the business of saying what he's not ready to do. He doesn't have to impress you. He did the ultimate at Calvary. He gave his life for you. Just for me, just for me and you. Jesus did it all just for us. Just for us, just for us. Jesus did it all just for us. So he can do anything. So let's ascribe all the greatness to him. Let's demonstrate our faithfulness towards him because we know he is good and his mercy endures forever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today, as we study the word of God from John 11, I'm going to be reading from verse 1. And it's talking about two sisters who had experience with Jesus Christ. I read verse 1. It says, Do you remember Mary who poured the costly perfume on Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair? You have done so much and you're wondering, do you have a reward? Has God forgotten me? You have been faithful, you have been committed. He will be faithful to you. The Bible says he's generous to the generous, he's faithful to the faithful. He's kind to the kind. He's righteous to the righteous. God is faithful. So the Bible remembers Mary, who poured the costly perfume on Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hairs. Well, her brother Lazarus, who lived in Bethany with Mary and her sister Martha, was sick. So the two sisters sent a message to Jesus saying, Sir, your good friend is very sick. Talking about Lazarus. She was confident that let's go to Jesus. We've built a relationship. His friend Lazarus is sick. Because they know that one good tongue deserves another. They've built a relationship. They've invested in, in the things that, that, that gives God glory. And you have my sister. He does not forget you. Verse 4 says, And when Jesus had heard about it, he said, The purpose of his illness is not dead, is not, is not death, but for the glory of God. I, the Son of God, will receive glory from this situation. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going through, the glory of God will be revealed in your situation. The glory of God will be manifested. Just the way Jesus said concerning the case of Lazarus. He says the purpose of his illness is not death. 
The purpose of what you are going through is not to bring you down. It's not to make you like you have no God. It's not to ridicule you. Look at the case of Job. He knew that it is going somewhere. The God itself is unfailing. So whatever you're going through, know it that it is working together for your good. Because the Bible says that it works together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Romans 8 and 20, 28. So I read on John 11. I'm reading the, the Living Bible translation. So verse 5 says, Although Jesus was fond of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days and and, had, and and made no move to go to them. So you are wondering, I have been asking God, I have been praying as if forgotten me. I'd say God is faithful and generous. The Bible says a thousand, it's not here, it's like a day before him. You may not know how, you may not know when, but you'll do it again. The Bible says, do you tarry, wait for it. He's going to do what he has promised you to do. Hallelujah. Verse 7 says, Finally, after two days, he said to his disciples, Let's go to Judea. But the disciple objected. Master, they said, Only a few days ago, the Jewish leaders in Judea were trying to kill you. Are you going there again? Because of you, he will do anything. Just be assured. Just be confident. He delayed two days. But he knew that he has a purpose. I read verse 9. Jesus replied, There are 12 hours of daylight every day, and during every hour of it, a man can walk safely and, uh, and not stumble. Verse 10. Only at night is there danger of a wrong step because of the dark. Then he said, Our friend Lazarus has gone to sleep, but now I will go and walk him him. He will go and work in him. God will step into your situation. The Bible says he does a new thing. Can you not see it? He will make a way in the wilderness. Be prepared. Don't give up on God. God is generous. Ever faithful, ever sure. For his mercies, they endure. Ever faithful, ever sure. Hold on. I know the period of waiting can be demanding, can be challenging, can be, can, can, can be burdensome, but grace unto you, much grace, hallelujah, acts of grace, the Bible says come to his throne of mercy and obtain grace, the grace to hold on, hold on, hallelujah. He will step into the situation. I read verse 12 and 13. It says, The disciples, thinking Jesus meant Lazarus was having a good night's rest, said, That means he is getting better. But Jesus meant Lazarus had died. How does the world describe your situation? And how do you describe it? Joy cometh in the morning, the Bible says. See it the way Jesus saw the case of Lazarus, that is not unto death. You've not been forgotten. You've not been forsaken. The Bible says to you that he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. So be confident that he did not bring you this far to leave you. The Bible says he will not leave you comfortless. Verse 14. Then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Because it seems like they were not getting it. And for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there. For this will give you another opportunity to believe me. Come, let's go to him. Hallelujah. Jesus, very confident about the situation. And I want you to be confident too. Because the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. And too must I pray. If Christ is confident that your situation is going to change, you must believe. And this was what he demonstrated. He had to tell the disciples, come and see. So that God glory. How do you see your situation? I want you to be prepared for the glory that is ahead. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is never late. He is never late. The Bible let us know that in his time he makes all things beautiful. Hallelujah. Never late with God. 
Verse 16 says, Thomas, nicknamed the, the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let's go too and die with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we see Thomas trying to be positive about it. And I mean about the dying of Christ. That Oh, let's go and die, die with Christ. Let's go and, you know, because they knew that in, in, on that same path that they are going to um, get to Lazarus' house, if he gets away with Christ. So it's like Thomas trying to be positive to, oh, let's go and die with him. But Christ is determined about your situation. But we cannot go ahead of him in his time, not your time. The Bible talks about the perfect will of God, the acceptable will of God. Hallelujah. The acceptable, not your will, but his will be done. Because his ways are perfect. His ways are not our ways. The Bible says, as far as the as heaven is far from the heart, so are his ways far from our ways. So let's leave it to him. Let's cast our cares on him. Hallelujah. Verse 17 says, And they arrived at Bethany. They were told that Lazarus had already been, been in the tomb for four days. So the news may look like it's getting from bad to worse. They, were, they confronted Jesus Christ with that news. They said, Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. I'm not moved by what I see, hallelujah. I'm not moved by what I hear, hallelujah. I'm only moved by the word of God, hallelujah. I'm only moved by the word of Christ, hallelujah. Be moved at what God says about you. Don't be tired in your work. Don't be tired in your faith. Hallelujah. Expect Christ on that on your situation. On your situation, expect Christ. Don't be tired in your work. Don't be tired in your faith. Don't be tired in praying. You don't know when he shall come. We are expecting Jesus on your matter. We are expecting Jesus. We are expecting Jesus. We don't know when he shall come. He arrived four days later in the case of Lazarus. Look at what verse 18 says. He said, Bethany was only a couple of miles down the road from Jerusalem. And many of the, of the Jewish leaders had come to pay their respect and console Mary and Martha on their loss. It was like a concluded situation. But verse 20, when Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Sir, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. That's a sign of confidence that if you were here, this won't happen. But he wasn't there. Can't he still do something? You might have said, God, where are you? Where are you when this happened? He's not blind to your situation. It is for his glory. His glory shall be manifested. His glory shall be seen. He says, so that people may give praise to your Father who is in heaven. Hallelujah. So that that glory may belong to him. So that people can see that you are peculiar. You are unique. At the end of the day, is for God's glory. So shall your testimony be. So don't doubt. Don't you doubt. Hallelujah. Be confident. Be hopeful. Verse 22 says, even now it's not too late. He says, even now it's not too late. Look at her faith. Even now it is not too late. For I know that God will bring my brother back to life again if you would only ask him to. So as I was trying to, to depict there that people might say, oh, it's too late. Forget about it. Why don't you just um, move on? Hold on. The Bible says, without faith, you can't please God. You can't walk with God. The currency here is faith. What has to be spent here is your faith, your patience, your confidence in God, your trust in Him. Martha said something profound in verse 22. He said, even now is not too late. Whose report shall you believe? Whose report shall you believe? I shall believe the report of the Lord. 
His report says it is well. His report says you are healed. His report says victory. Its report says it is well. That's his report for you. He says, for I know that God will bring my brother back to life. For I know that you will get your job again. For I know that you would give birth again. For I know that you would pass that exam. Verse 23 says, Jesus told her, your brother will come back to life again. That is unity. The Bible says two cannot work together except they agree. Jesus had to agree with what matter believe. What do you believe that Jesus will agree with you about? Verse 24 says, yes, matter said, even everyone else does on, on resurrection day. So you will see Jesus telling him, that, don't even help me. That's not where I'm going. Jesus told her, I am the one who raises the dead and gives them life again. What are we talking about? Don't help me. You don't need to help God. Hallelujah. Don't help him. He's bigger than what people say, what you can think. He's a big God. You are big, oh, you are mighty. All those songs you have sung, that you serve a big God. My God is big. My God is awesome. Why are you just singing those songs for nothing? Hallelujah. A song is coming to her heart. I just had a picture of women singing, You are big, oh, you are not a small God, oh, you are big, oh, you are not a small God. This is the time to prove that we believe what we sang. Jesus told her, I am the one who raises dead and gives them life again. Anyone who believes in me, even though he dies like anyone else, shall live again. There is hope again for you. 26 says, He is giving eternal life for believing in me and shall never perish. Do you believe this matter? Verse 27, Yes, Master, she told him, I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one we have, we have so long awaited. Then she left, she left him and turned to Mary and returned to Mary and said, calling her aside from the mourners, told her, here, he is here. He wants to see you. So Mary went to him at once. Now Jesus had stayed outside the village at the place where Martha met him. When the Jewish leaders who were at the house trying to console Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus' tomb to weep. So they followed her. <laughs> Hallelujah. When Mary arrived where Jesus was, she fell down on her feet saying, Sir, if you had been here, my brother would still be alive. <laughs> I wish he knew. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jewish leader wailing with her, he was moved with indignation and deeply troubled. Where is he buried? He asked them. They told him, come and see. Tears came to Jesus' eyes. They were close friends. The Jewish leader said, see how much you love him. Hallelujah. But some said, this fellow, this fellow healed a blind man. Why wouldn't he keep Lazarus from dying? <laughs> Hallelujah. And again, Jesus was moved with deep hunger. Then they came to the tomb. It was a cave with a heavy stone rolled across its door. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, said, but now the smell will be terrible. <laughs> Martha was trying to tell Jesus that now the smell will be terrible for he has been dead four days. Where is your hope? If Jesus says, do this, then your hope should be higher than, oh, what's he up to? What's going to happen? Don't give up. You've done it before. He says, do it again. It doesn't seem, you know, 
feasible or realistic, but he says, do it. He will back you up. It doesn't matter the smell, how long it's been, the sensation has been, has been shoved aside. But if Jesus says there is a way there, there is a way. He makes a way in the wilderness. He said, roll the stone away. They were trying to tell him, it, 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 it stinks now. But rather, what I would have expected is our hope should be rising. Down. What was he up to? Hallelujah. Our hope is necessary. Hallelujah. Verse 40 says, But didn't I tell you that you will see a wonderful miracle from God if you believe? Jesus was saying, Didn't I tell you? Where is your hope? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, of course, but I said it because of all these people standing here so that they would believe you sent me. Then he shouted, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came, bound up in grave's cloth, his face muffled in, 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 dead, in, in head sword. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Hmm. Hallelujah. And so, at last, many Jewish leaders who were with Mary and saw it happen finally believed him. I dare you to believe before you see changes. Be hopeful. Your hope will drive you far. The Bible lets us know that the greatest of them is, is our hope. Have hope in God. Have trust in God. Hallelujah. Don't let your hope be buried. Keep your hope alive. Jesus is on your situation. He's going to roll that stone away so that that situation that looks like impossible can be made possible because it doesn't lie. And you will come in at the right time if you keep your hope alive. It's coming right near you. Don't be tired. Don't be weary. He's going to do it. The Bible says, wait on him. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 3 says that for, he, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak and not lie. Though it tarry, it says, wait for it because it will surely come. Hallelujah. It will not delay. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening. Hold on. Jesus is right by the corner and your joy will be restored. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching Pastor Bim TV. God bless you.